This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas, and I want to talk about some more circular cast-ons. This first one is called full needle rib, which means we're using every needle. Now imagine I had 110 needles on the main bed, I had 110 needles on the river. I am going to be able to use twice as many rib needles for ribbing if I use full needle rib. And what's more, I'm going to be able to use much thinner yarn. Using your ribber is going to increase the range of yarns that you could use with any given machine. So on this machine, what I want to do is get in and show you exactly how this needle arrangement needs to be for full needle rib. The needle arrangement for full needle rib is very simple. You bring out all the needles. And as I zoom in, you will be able to see that what's a little different about full needle rib is that it's at half pitch. Half pitch is a racking setting on your machine and in half pitch you'll note that the gay pegs don't line up exactly. They are in between each other and the needles, if pushed out, do not collide. They go in between each other. So that's what you need for full needle rib for a needle arrangement. I pick out the needles and I do two rows with carriage with no yarn just to even them up. Now keep in mind that usually for full needle rib you want the end needles to be on the main bed. Consult your manual for the setting on the zigzag row. Everything is set plain for plain knitting and the ribber and main carriage tensions are set as tight as they'll go which is below zero. I brought the yarn between the beds and I threaded the machine and then I knit one row for the zigzag row. Here's a shot up close of that zigzag row. I hung my comb and weights just like I did for one by one ribbing. Now you may need more weight because you have more stitches. My carriages are set for circular knitting. On this machine my left part button is in and my right part lever, lever on the ribber is up. And then I just knit three rows for the circular rows. Here's how those three circular rows look. First I went across, then I came back, and then I knitted across again. So there are three rows. You can see the two rows here and one row for the ribber bit. I've changed to plain knitting. I brought the ribber bed back up. I had popped it down to make it easier to see the circular rows. And now I'm just going to knit my full needle rib. you have a situation where you need to transfer the ribber needles up to the main bed and go from full needle rib to one flat layer of knitting on the main bed and to do that you turn the half pitch back to normal pitch so that these line up again and then you take the double eye transfer tool and you pick up a, a stitch from the ribber and you lay it in the hook of the corresponding main bed needle and just transfer them one by one and then you're ready to knit plain stockinette again. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. The procedure to go from doing ribbing to doing only main bed work is always the same. You drop the ribber all the way down, you install the main bed sinker plate and then you adjust the tension to the desired tension and go ahead and knit. I have just taken the full needle rib off the machine and I'm just poking it on the gate pegs so that you can see it. Down here is the full needle rib. Up here is the main bed work. It's really quite thick. It has a smaller version of that same smoothly rolled edge that we get with a circular cast on and it does not draw in. It can even flare out from having the same number of stitches above it because that's just the main bed stitches. So down here I had a river stitch in between but it's placed up on a main bed needle now. Now to just contrast this, this was the one by one rib and look at the difference. 
This is a much more dense fabric, and as I said, you could use a much, much thinner yarn. On the bulky machine, I have used yarn that you would normally use on the standard machine by going to a full needle rib. 